Shannon Sharp had a complete meltdown about Tom Brady and Leonard Fournette. So Leonard Fournette answered back and Brady calls out a wide receiver ahead of training camp. Let's go. You are locked on Buccaneers, your daily Tampa Bay Buccaneers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up and welcome to the Locked On Bucks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. We are your daily podcast covering the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. And we thank you for making this your first listen or view of the day. I am James Yarko, joined by my esteemed co-host, Mr. David Harrison. And of course, you can check out all of David's written work over at Sports Illustrated's BucksGameDay.com. I am over at SB Nation's BucksNation.com. And we are on Twitter at LockedOnBucks, at JayArko underscore Bucks, and at DHarrison82. Today's episode is brought to you by Blue Nile. Make your moment sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com. And Locked On Podcast listeners get $50 off purchases of $500 or more. This podcast exclusive includes engagement rings, so use the promo code Locked On at checkout at BlueNile.com. We thank you again for making the Locked On Bucks podcast your first listen or view of the day. Shannon Sharp, former National Football League tight end, Shannon Sharp, had lots of loud words to say about Tom Brady recently, James. Let's listen into those before we give our own reactions and responses to those loud, boisterous words. Skip, skip, skip. Got the show. I, I can tell you, he beat Patrick Mahomes head to head in the Super Bowl. So let me. So let me. Right? So, so does he deserve what he got? Yeah. Okay, so Patrick Mahomes winning an MVP, winning a Super Bowl, he's okay. not deserving of that. Okay. Joe so, Montana was not deserving of what he got. Okay. So no other player, only Tom Brady was deserving. Well, Brady's got seven of them, and six he, of them won with game skip, drives. Skip. Skip. It doesn't quarter. skip. Five, six, four, three. See what you do because Tom Brady has seven. He's more deserving. That is a lie. I'm saying that is a lie. Every player that's accomplished something that's just not coming not to close. the NFL is deserved. He he is deserving. Mm. Stop saying that. Yeah, uh, no, wait, how about wait, this? The quote from Fournette isn't he deserves more than anybody. He just says he deserves everything he's got. What player doesn't deserve everything he's got? Well, I, what does that matter? No, this is not what well, does I it mean, matter. Well, we're, we're talking about the GOAT. Are you saying he's not the GOAT? That's not what you're saying. Huh? That's not what you're saying. Are you disqualifying you, you what said that's, not, that's not what the question was. That's not what the question was. You turned it into that. And again, Leonard Fournette was an out of shape, underachieving running back yeah. in, t- in, 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 uh, in Jacksonville. Yeah, what did Brady do with him? Skip. You that, turned him into playoff Lenny. It's called leadership. Why did, hold on. Leadership. He did it with Randy. Let me Moss. ask you a question. He did it with AD. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Come on. Did Leonard Fournette not change his work ethic? If Leonard Fournette had to work his ass off in Jacksonville, like he did in Tampa, he would have never been out of there. It's called leadership. You know, it's I called guess, the Brady effect. Skip. Jacksonville was not paying you that kind of money. I got to lead you. I got to give you 10, 11, 12, 13 million dollars and lead you. Mm. No, what happened was when he's on a minimum salary, mm. he's trying to make maximum money. Now, all of a sudden, he'll fall in line. Mm. All of a sudden, he didn't become difficult. Mm. Stop doing that, Skip. No, it's because of the Brady effect. Now it's the Brady effect. Well, he took the whole Suckaneers, the seven and nine Suckaneers. So why did he take them back? Into the why did he take them back? They brought everybody back. You told me they were going to repeat. That's what you told me. Everybody else told me they were going to be better. What happened? They had the champs dead to rights. I don't know what they had. They had Why didn't they rights. repeat? They made one mistake on one blitz, and all of a sudden, Cooper Cup, Cooper Cup them the way he did everybody else. No. Which is why I told you he was more valuable than Aaron Donald. Okay, I, I didn't okay. see much Aaron Donald no, in this no, no. game, <laughs> but I sure saw Cooper Cup. Tom Brady brought them back to 27 all. That's whoa, whoa, all whoa, I know. whoa, 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 whoa. Yep. Why, was it, why did it ever get? Why did it ever have to get to that? Why was he down? Because the Rams were on the way to winning it all. That's how good they were. So, hold on. So Tampa knew that. Mm-hmm. So Tampa says, since the Rams are going to win it all, mm-hmm. we're going to fall behind 24-3. Is mm-hmm. that what you're telling me? I'm telling you that he, he took the champs right to the wire. That's what I – and it took one defensive breakdown that was not Tom Brady's fault. If he thrown a pick six to lose the game, yeah. you got me. Yeah. All he does is he, he pulls yeah. off late the def- clutch the, the def- miracles. The defense – for four turnovers mm-hmm. after Tom Brady yep. turned the ball over twice himself. Yeah, it's called it, the Brady effect. 
the, the, so, he, so he lost the game. It's, it's what you – no, he won the – he effectively won the – No, everything ain't no sense. Like, it's, it ain't no sense. See, there you go. You, you, you make Tom Brady. See, Tom Brady is a little pregnant. Either you are or you are pregnant. Mm. Either he won or he didn't. I don't want to hear – he took the champs down to the wire. I don't want to hear that he came so close. No. Don't you do that. You said what happened. I just told you what happened. He lost. That's what happened. Barely. Matthew Stafford, I play. We don't do barely. Well, he didn't lose. His defense broke down. See, now, so what well, about the, with the defense? Gave him those if, four if turnovers. Play safety. I don't think he would have broken. What, what? Hold on. What about those four turnovers the defense okay. got for him? I what about you. what they did? What about what the defense did for him in New Orleans? Yeah. What about what the defense did they, to Aaron Rodgers? Watch what playoff Lenny does for him this year. Well, That's all I, I don't saying. know. Did, did you? Did you? I, well, hopefully he's in a little better shape than what he popped up on that screen yesterday. Mm. Don't you hope that too? Who Brady or Lenny? Leonard Fournette? Oh well. I, he... All right. Uh, that was. That's a lot to. That's a lot to unpack there um first and foremost uh what happened injuries injuries happen uh you had ryan jensen playing hurt you had tristan Wirfs not playing you had antonio brown off god knows where uh you had chris godwin out you had your starting defense on the field for the first time together all year like all year uh and you know, the defense got him four turnovers. Yeah, one of them came with a minute and a half left in the first half. Uh, and then he scored on, you know, Brady-led scoring drives on two of the three drives following uh, takeaways by the defense in the second half. So yeah. um, I think what we have here, David, is Shannon Sharp's unquenched desire to try to tear down Tom Brady at any point that he possibly can. And, you know, as much as I don't really care for Skip Bayless, I was shocked that he kept as level of a head as he did. But, no, you know, Skip and, and Leonard Fournette didn't say that, you know, not everybody deserves what they got when once they get to the NFL. But, you know, Tom Brady just as much, if not more so than, than everybody else due to the longevity, due to the consistency, due to, to all the things that we've seen him do over the last two years in Tampa. Then you extrapolate that into two decades in New England. Yeah. He absolutely deserves what he gets. And, and he's a leader of men. He's a leader of players and he's able to get guys to elevate their game around him. Unlike other quarterbacks that we've seen, uh, unlike other players that we've seen because then we've seen guys succeed with Tom move on for those big money contracts and fail. Right. I mean, wow. First and foremost, that's a lot. I mean, I'm honestly, I'm one of the people in the population that thinks he's like these scripted argument shows are overly scripted. And, and a lot of this is just fake and it's for ratings and stuff. But like Shannon was in his feelings on that one. Uh, I think that skip struck an iceberg is, is what happened. And Leonard Fournette and inadvertently struck an iceberg is what happened because Shannon basically seems to take this Leonard Fournette comment of Tom Brady's earned or deserves everything he's gotten. And you're right. Shannon flips it on the, on the 180 degrees and, and takes that as well. Leonard Fournette is saying that nobody else deserves what they've earned or, or what they've gotten. Uh, I wonder if this doesn't go back to somebody saying that, Shannon Sharp's only a Hall of Fame tight end because of John Elway or Shannon Sharp only has Super Bowl rings because of John Elway and Terrell Davis and like the Broncos never got close to winning a Super Bowl with, with Shannon Sharp. But as soon as TD uh, busted out on the scene in the in the mid to late 90s there, the Broncos got over the hump. I don't know. I, I feel like this had this. Honestly, I feel like this is more to do with Shannon Sharp than it has to do with Tom Brady uh, to be to be fully quite honest with you. Um, listen, I mean. Every player in the National Football League deserves what they get because every single player, this is this is literally a killer be killed business. And you're not actually dying, but it's a performance based business, right? Which means you either win or you lose. Like you can tie regular season games. When it comes down to getting hardware, you either win or you lose. That's it. There is there is no in between. You either won or you lost. And you don't win as an individual. I don't care how great you are. You don't win as an individual. Tom Brady can't win as an individual and Tom Brady can't lose as an individual. And I think that's really the crux of this conversation is uh, it's funny how you see the juxtaposition where 
Skip refuses to acknowledge that Tom Brady could possibly lose the game while Shannon Sharp refuses to acknowledge that Tom Brady could single-handedly bring his team back into the game. And then, so both, both sides have half of the argument where it's a team game. And then they have half of their argument where no, it's on Tom Brady. They're just flipping halves. It's like the, the, the chocolate vanilla cookies. They're just splitting which half they're going to take from each side of the cookie. So it's, I mean, it's all comical to me, honestly, and none of it really matters. Um, they all deserve what they've gotten and Leonard Fournette and his, his work ethic uh, and all that stuff. I mean, Leonard Fournette was part of what earned the Jacksonville Jaguars pretty much nothing but one year where they almost made it to the Super Bowl. And Leonard Fournette is a big reason why he has a Super Bowl ring himself. So uh, regardless of how fat he is right now. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> and and he's uh, he started to address that. But yeah, um, this this I think you're right. I didn't really think about it in, in that aspect that this this has. For him to get that emotional and that upset over this particular comment by Leonard Fournette, yeah. this is a Shannon issue. This yeah. is something something triggered him. Yeah. And you bring it up Terrell Davis. I mean, Terrell Davis was the truth. The yeah. dude won Super Bowl MVP when he literally couldn't see anything because he got hit so hard and should have been taken out of the game for a concussion. Um, yet he was still scoring touchdowns blind in a Super Bowl. Um, I mean, truthfully, Terrell Davis won two Super Bowl MVPs, but the NFL gave John Elway one because he's John Elway. Uh, that's coming straight from somebody who was living in the Denver area at the time. But listen, speaking of running backs, Leonard Fournette had a resp response to Shannon Sharp's tirade. I'm not going to call it a fit. I will. just did. Um, <laughs> but we're going to talk about that here in just a minute. But first, we're going to talk about our friends at BlueNile.com. With BlueNile.com, you can celebrate all of life's special moments, including Super Bowls if you really want to, from creating the custom engagement ring of her dreams to gifting a classic and timeless jewelry piece, all at prices you won't find at a traditional jeweler. Whether you're ready to pop the question or you're celebrating a milestone moment, find jewelry as unique as her with the modern convenience of online shopping at BlueNile.com. Build the engagement ring of her dreams or celebrate life's special moments with fine jewelry. No matter what you're looking for, Blue Nile has jewelry experts on hand 24-7. Make your moments sparkle with jewelry from blue Nile.com and locked on bucks listeners get $50 off purchases of $500 or more. This podcast exclusive includes engagement rings. So again, use the code locked on at blue Nile.com. That's code locked on. Plus every order is insured ships free and arrives in discreet packaging that won't give away what's inside shop stress free and find your forever piece. Go to blue Nile.com today. Thanks again for making Locked On Bucks podcast first listener, first view every single day. The Ultimate NBA Mock Draft starts June 16th with over 50 insiders. Nothing equals the Ultimate NBA Mock Draft. The Locked On NBA Big Board Draft Experts plus the Odyssey Insiders. First pick is June 16th, so search Ultimate NBA Mock Draft and follow now so you don't miss a pick. Very excited about that. I know one thing, Michael Irvin will not be praising their draft picks like he did ours and mine over at Locked on Commanders. Still a very cool moment. James, getting back to the Shannon Sharp tirade, Leonard Fournette had a response to Sharp's comments on Undisputed uh, and was far nicer, quite honestly, than Shannon Sharp was. Leonard Fournette tweeting at, quote, at Shannon Sharp, Unk, you know I respect you, but come on, out of shape in Jacksonville. I rushed 1,000 yards, two of my three seasons there. But again, you just someone that motivates me. I've always worked my butt off. Uh, but if you don't know the facts about something, why speak on it? but appreciates you end quote uh Leonard Fournette uh this is the epitome of taking the high road if I was Leonard Fournette in this situation watching what Shannon Sharp did on on Undisputed first off I am not calling him unk which I know is a, a term of like yeah it's a, it's a term of respect it's a term of endearment no. Uh, from from a lot of these current players to a former player, um, I'm I'm far more disrespectful in my response if if I'm Leonard Fournette. So kudos to to Lenny for mm. for tweeting that out. But there's no question about it; he does work his butt off, which is why you and I were talking about how we're not worried that he was a little bit overweight at mandatory minicamp. We know. Right. When, when the time comes, he will be ready for the season. He will be in shape. His trainer posted on Instagram, on an Instagram story, 
Lenny running like it was either 28.3 or 29.3 miles per hour, like something absolutely ridiculous. The dude yeah. is busting his butt, getting ready for the season, just like we knew he would. And now Shannon Sharp has given him additional motivation that, you know, the if the Bucks were so good, why didn't they repeat? And if Leonard Fournette was so good, why couldn't he cut it in Jacksonville? Instead, he's playing on this minimum deal to try to earn a big payday again. Well, guess what? He got a payday and he got it with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers because he earned that. Yeah, he had his issues in Jacksonville, but production wasn't one of them. Like you said, David, he almost single-handedly carried them to a Super Bowl. Yeah. And to disrespect him that way is is mind-boggling. So, again, I say hats off to Leonard Fournette for being so respectful to someone who just absolutely trashed him in the manner that Shannon Sharp did. Yeah, I mean, you know, he could have gone a different way with that. Like, he could have tweeted at Shannon Sharp – Unk, let me know when Terrell Davis comes on the show and I'll watch him carry you to the finish line there like he did in Denver. <laughs> Just an example off the top of my head. You or, know what I mean? Something like was, that. Who was the running back for uh, for Baltimore when Shannon was there and, and they won the Super Bowl? Wasn't it? Uh, was that Jamal Lewis? Lewis? Yeah, Jamal Lewis. Was it Jamal Lewis Dan still? Yeah. yeah. You Jamal know what I mean? Lewis. I mean, look, people yeah. can get disrespectful in all kinds of ways. Uh, with Shannon, like I said, that's why, you know, I call this an iceberg. Look, a uh, quick, quick analogy explanation. Basically what it means is you see the tip of the iceberg, which is the response, but the issue is actually subsurface and uh, is much, usually much larger. Like, you know, if you go to Taco Bell and like they forget your, I don't know, your side of nacho cheese and you get really mad to the point where you're like throwing food around your own car and like going in and just throwing an absolute fit. It's probably not about the nacho cheese, right? Like it's probably about something beneath the surface much much bigger than nacho and cheese sauce you know what i mean like that's what i mean by iceberg so shannon's reaction to this um and honestly i think skip was kind of surprised was like hey leonard fournette says tom brady deserves everything you got what do you think and skip just loses it like it's just yeah it's there's something deeper going on there with shannon i hope he figures it out and i hope he's uh happy and peaceful and at a minimum does not have a tirade about me which he won't so uh it's just it's just all very interesting but yeah applause to to leonard fournette for taking the high road um yeah it's interesting. I mean, do, does is there somebody in Brady's camp showing Brady this video and saying like, "Hey, Tom, not only are are you the oldest quarterback that we've pretty much ever seen, not only is there doubt cast around the Buccaneers being able to do this without Antonio Brown, without Bruce Arians as the head coach, yeah. but now Shannon Sharp's basically calling you worthless and saying that you." single-handedly lost the divisional round uh, against the Rams as if Tom Brady needs extra motivation. I don't know that that's happening because Shannon Sharp is not on the field, so Tom can't physically defeat him. You know what I mean? I think he's just going to keep beating him by just being the best to ever play the game, and Shannon's going to continue being one of the best Denver Broncos to ever play the game. Yeah, possibly. It just it kind of reminds me, and I'm, I'm going to spin this over to hockey for just a second, David, just a second. I but, like hockey. Just stay away from baseball. But Paul Bissonette, uh, he picked against the the Lightning in the Stanley Cup last year. Mm. And so what happened after the Lightning won their second consecutive Stanley Cup? Stamkos FaceTimes Bissonette to rub it in his face. <laughs> and then John oh. Cooper FaceTimes Bissonette nice. to rub it in his face. Then Pat Maroon does it. So I get the feeling this video is going to start circulating within some circles with the Buccaneers saying, like, look at the crap that they're saying about our running back. Look at the crap that he's saying about our quarterback. Like, one of the first ha-ha phone calls that is going to be made is going to be to Shannon Sharp if the Buccaneers are hoisting a Lombardi in February. Yeah, I mean, I, I could see that. You know what I mean? Or maybe just like a, a little a little slide jab, like, you know, we earned this one or, or something, something along those lines. I don't know. I mean, at the end of the day, man, like there's, there's a lot of people who judge whether or not someone quote unquote deserves what they have or what they want or whatever. And usually it's born out of jealousy and, and a, a disappointment in what they've done in their own life or career. So uh, that's, that's typically where those kinds of emotions come from. 
I'm sure Tom's uh, social media team is concocting some sort of uh, hilarious response videos because there's no level uh, of petty too low uh, for those. But something else that Tom Brady is doing is placing high expectations on one of his receivers and one of his newest teammates before training camp kicks off. But first, you know how our friends at Built Bar are always coming out with amazing new flavors. Well, this time, Built has outdone themselves with their new mud pie flavor. And for the first time ever, Built is introducing the new mud pie flavor in both mud pie bar and mud pie puff. Are you not sure what a mud pie tastes like? Well, if you're a chocolate fan, you better prepare yourself because the new mud pie bar is rich whipped cream and chocolate mousse smothered in 100% real chocolate and topped with a cookies and cream crumble. You've got to try mud pie as soon as possible and you need to hurry because the mud pie bar and mud pie puff are only available for a limited time. Are you still not convinced? Well, luckily we saved the best for last. It's actually good for you. All built products are low calorie, high protein and low sugar. Mud pie is packed with 16 grams of protein and only 150 calories and eight grams of sugar. It's like your mom baked the most deliciously creamy chocolate mud pie, wrapped it up just for you. And like all built bars, it is covered in 100% real chocolate. That means healthy and tasty. Go to built.com. Use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off your order. Again, promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. Wrapping things up here on a Wednesday edition of Locked On Bucks podcast. And Tom Brady is not wasting any time calling out his wide receivers and planting high expectations firmly on their shoulders. When Brady was speaking with ESPN's Jenna Lane, Brady said straight to the point regarding new wide receiver and new teammate Russell Gage, quote, he has to have a big year, end quote. So Russell Gage is a guy that they bring in to replace Antonio Brown. You have questions surrounding Chris Godwin's availability as far as when he's going to be back from this ACL surgery, when he's going to be a viable option on the field, because even once he's back and practicing, it's still going to take a little while for him to become acclimated to the NFL game. We know the speed and, and everything is different on a game field than it is on a practice field. So Brady flat out saying like, dude, it's you. You're the one that has to step up. You're the one that has to fill these shoes. Take the pressure off Mike. Take the pressure off of Shannon Sharp's favorite player, Leonard Fournette. And we still don't know if we have Gronk or not. So it's you. You are the one that has to step up huge for this team. I don't hate it. I, I really, I don't hate this move by Brady at all to basically just flat out say, this is why you're here. This is what's expected of you. You better get it done. Yeah, look, yeah, it's, look, it's 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 stress sub submersion. I don't know if I'm saying that word correctly. Um, you know, look, let's just let's just pile it on early. You know what I mean? Let's find out if he can take it now or if he can't take it at all. Because if we if we want to tiptoe around this thing and kind of say, oh, you know, Russell just gonna be another receiver on the team, and everybody's at their role, and everybody has to play their part, and all that, all, this, all this other stuff. And then you get to week one and all of a sudden Russell Gage realizes like, bro, I'm about to get 12 targets in this thing from Tom Brady. And if I don't make at least eight of these catches, we know, we may not win this game. Um, then you're going to find out in week one or two, if Russell Gage can handle the pressure, can handle the spotlight, right? No, let's find out now. Let's, let's do this now. Let's get this out of the way right here, right now. Let's put all this pressure on him because what's going to happen exactly what's happening right now. We're going to talk about it. Russell Gage's name is going to go out there in the stratosphere. It's going to be in headlines. People are going to be clicking on it. They're going to be tweeting about it. And Russell Gage, as much as players want to say, he's going to notice it. As much as they want to say they don't notice it, he's going to notice it. He's going to feel it. It's going to be real. I'm not saying he's going to buckle under it. Hopefully he doesn't for the Buccaneers' sake. But at the end of the day, when he comes into training camp, you're setting the stage to, to not make Russell Gage the, the, the backup, right? Like all offseason, really, it's just been – well, Russell Gage really needs to come in here and really just fill in until Chris Godwin comes back, right? But, yeah, we don't know when that's going to be. Some people have said Christmas. Some people have said Thanksgiving. Some people have just said earlier than than expected. You know what I mean? Well, it depends on when you expect on what earlier means. So, again, man, bring him in here and baptize him in the fire. That is wide receiver number two for Tom Brady playing on the opposite side of Mike Evans and see if he can handle that pressure. And, and if anything, you get him used to that role 
and you want him to embrace that role uh, because, again, and then moving on further down the line with chess moves, if he embraces that role and succeeds in it, when Chris Godwin comes back, man, you got a very, very talented and tested wide receiver number three now that can really do some damage against defenses that now have to cover Mike Evans and Chris Godwin back on the field together. Now, David, we talked about the most important offensive player on the Buccaneers not named Tom Brady, right? Yeah. You talked about Ryan Jensen. I talked about Leonard Fournette. How important is Russell Gage to the success of the Buccaneers on the offensive side of the football? I mean, are we talking top three? Because we know Mike's going to be Mike, right? We know mm -hmm. we know Brait, what he is. We know what Wirfs is. You know, we, we know all of these things. So when you take a look at the, the spectrum of how the Buccaneers offense is laid out, how important now is Gage's impact with or without Godwin at the beginning of the season? I mean, we're talking top three, top five. What are what are your thoughts? I mean, he's incredibly important, right? He's at least top five. Like, you know, if you go if you go player by player and you don't group the offensive line, you know, together, he's at least top five. I think obviously, you know, Leonard is up there. Obviously, I have Ryan Jensen up there. Rashad White is is in my opinion up there, and I'll kind of caveat that to be whoever RB number two is is, is up there. You have to yeah. be able to rely on that guy to be a change of pace guy. Mike Evans is obviously there as well, and I think that's where Russell Gage and or like you could be you could basically swap out Cam Bray or Russell Gage until Rob Gronkowski comes back. If Gronk comes back, he automatically I think kind of fills that spot, and that's actually going to make life easier for Russell Gage. But if it's Russell Gage and Cam Bray defenses are essentially going to come in. And if I'm a defense coordinator, I'm going to say, listen, we're naturally better covering tight ends, middle part of the field seams, all these things than we are covering the deep. So let's, let's add some additional resources to cover the deep and let's take our chances with the underneath stuff with the tight end. Well, what that means is now that tight end now has to come punish you for making that decision. That tight end has to say, okay, you're going to, you're going to take resources away from covering me to cover my guy, Russ over there. I'm going to punish you, force you to bring those resources back down in the box because that's when Russell Gage is going to go over the top. So it's almost kind of like a combination deal. Uh, and that's why when we had that conversation the other day, I didn't go wide receiver, even though it kind of feels like an almost obvious choice to go to with Chris Godwin being out because, again, and, and you know, you hope it doesn't happen, but if Russell Gage just isn't working, you can go to Scotty Miller. You can go to Tyler Johnson. You can go to Brashad Perryman. Uh, Todd Bowles is excited to see Devin Tompkins, you know I mean, out of Utah State in training camp and see if he might be able to do something. And I'll tell you, a lot of people say, oh, yeah, Devin Tompkins, he's fast, he's 5'8", probably return specials. He really didn't do a lot of returning at Utah State. Now, it doesn't mean he won't do it in Tampa, but there's a there's a very real possibility that uh, Todd Bowles is looking at Devin Tompkins as a shorter version of A.B. because if you go turn on the Utah State film, uh, he's got a lot of A.B. type of tendencies, and that includes his on-the-field tenacity. Like, that dude likes to chirp, and he likes to get in people's faces uh, and let them know when he makes plays. Uh, in fact, I actually... Uh, in our, in our group chat at, at game day at bucksamday.com, our group text, I actually made a little bit of a bold training camp prediction uh, that Devin that Devin Tompkins is going to be the first player in a Bucks uniform to get involved in a training camp scrum. The, the reason I, I put Russell Gage lower is just because he's not the single point of failure for the wide receiver group. If he fails, they have other options that don't look as attractive on the surface but could actually play better if given the opportunity. All right. Well, with that, David, we are going to wrap this up. And uh, we thank you for making Locked on Bucks your first listen every day. Now make your second listen to Locked on NFL podcast. Our national NFL experts and insiders keeps keep fans dialed in with the biggest stories and the latest news from around the league because an offseason doesn't equal a break in action. Follow Locked On NFL every day on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. We will be back on Friday when the Tampa Bay Lightning have a 1-0 lead over the Colorado Avalanche in the Stanley Cup Final. And if you would like to contribute to the Locked On Bucks program by sending in your questions or your topics, of course, you can do so by leaving us a voicemail at 813-444-5841 or by sending us an email to LockedOnBucksPodcast at gmail.com. Com. Check out all of David's written work over at BucksGameDay.com. Check out mine at BucksNation.com. And, of course, make sure you're following along on Twitter at LockedOnBucks, at JRCO underscore Bucks, and at DHarrison82. Hope you all have an absolutely outstanding day. Stay safe, stay healthy, wash your hands, be good to one another, fire those cannons. We thank you so much for joining us right here at LockedOnBucks.